according to one of the most prominent classic in Vedic astrology, astrology is all about the analysis of ninth house. Why? Because this is luck. It is one of the most important houses. Everyone does some type of effort in their life. Right? There are only few people who will do no effort in life. This is Niruddeshi person, right? Person without any target. Person without any motivation. Right? These are people just roaming here and there, just spending their time and wasting time of others. These are the people with very afflicted ascendant and very afflicted ascendant lord. However, other than that, everyone will do work. But the reward that you will get from your work is the matter of fortune which is seen with respect to the ninth house. So it is very clear. If ninth house is good, one is fortunate. Fortunate means one will meet right people at right point of time. One will get proper opportunity as per their education, skills, hard work. And they will shine into it. If one is lucky, they will do little hard work, but will get more result. If one is having normal luck, then they will do hard work and will get result accordingly. Whereas unlucky people, what happens with them is they will do more hard work, but they will not get the result. Recognition is difficult for them to get. They don't meet right people. They don't meet the right opportunities. They don't get right exposure. Generally, when people are unfortunate, you see that when major opportunities come in their life, because of some reason or the other, you say disease or misfortune in the family, they lose the chance and then they are forced to live a life of compromise. So ninth house is the main house which decides this and we will see how to analyze the ninth house. First and the foremost thing is if benefic planets are connected to the ninth house, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, Moon, one is very fortunate and lucky. In this particular connection, it does not matter these planets are lord of which house. Only their connection with the ninth house is enough. In fact, even in those cases where these planets connected to the ninth house are weak, I have seen that the person is very fortunate and lucky. Of course, this happens at the right point of time and you have to do a proper analysis of the horoscope. The importance of ascendant and tenth house I have already told you. So ascendant and tenth house have to be good. Only then you will come to the ninth house. That is a basic thing that you have to keep in mind. So beneficial planet connected to the ninth house, Jupiter, Venus, Moon, Mercury, no matter they are Lord of which houses or no matter they are in which condition will make a person fortunate. In this particular setup, if these planets are powerful, exalted, Vargottam, Multrikon, Sorashi, then one will be more fortunate as compared to the one who is having these planets in ninth house in inimical Rashi, debilitation, etc. Remember, if these planets are in ninth house in combustion, then the result is almost lost. In that case, you should not say that this person is fortunate. But except for that, even debilitated Jupiter, Mercury, Venus or Moon in the ninth house will make a person more fortunate as compared to others. These people will do less hard work but will get more result. They will be recognized. They will get credit. They will meet right opportunity at right point of time. And when fortune is there, you know, you get to enjoy in life. Things are running smooth. Things are stable. And you have enjoyment in life, right? Unfortunate people, generally you see, you say someone is married. So after marriage, first of all, there will be delay in marriage. Even after that, if you get married, then initially there are only struggles in marriage for one, one and a half year. After that, that you develop understanding, then some calamities in profession, personal life, death of people, financial problems come. As you you know, overcome them and now the, and now you are old or now you are not able to enjoy, then you will want to produce child. That will also be difficult. Conception will happen, but then there can be failed pregnancies and all of these things are the result of bad fortune. Good fortune on the other hand indicates that person will meet person, meet a right person at right point of time. So take example marriage. Person will meet the life partner at right point of time. Even without considering astrology, even if they marry, they will marry someone with a good horoscope only, the one person, uh, the one whose horoscope are matching to their horoscopes. And then they will marry and after marriage, there will be enjoyment, they will be lucky after marriage. You see, because there is an added uh, 
a person in your family after marriage, so there will automatically be an increase in income, status, and all of these things. These are fortunate people, and you become fortunate when there is a benefic planet connected to the ninth. Other than that, ninth lord in a powerful condition, ninth lord exalted, Swarashi, Multhri, Konvar, Guttam, also indicates that one is fortunate. On the other hand, when the ninth lord is debilitated, when the ninth lord is combust, when the ninth lord goes into an inimical Rashi, in that scenario, you should say that one is unfortunate. This is the difference between planet in ninth house, beneficial planet in ninth house will make you fortunate despite being debilitated, but that is not the case with ninth lord. One peculiarity that I have seen with ninth lord is that ninth lord in 12th house or ninth lord in 6th house, we will generally, or even in fact, ninth lord in 3rd house also. This 3rd, 6th and 12th house we generally consider as bad house, but because these houses are good from the ninth house, right? 12th house is 4th from the ninth house, 6th house is 10th from the ninth house, and 3rd house is 7th from the ninth house. If the ninth lord is going into 3rd house, he will expect the ninth house back. In these conditions, though luck may come late, there can be struggle in getting lucky. One becomes lucky in a later part of life or one becomes lucky after much struggle, hardship, humiliation. But one certainly becomes lucky. right? The worst planet for luck or the house which indicates misfortune is the 8th house. So generally in those cases when the Ninth house, ninth lord goes to eighth house, eighth lord comes to ninth house, ninth and eighth lord are conjoined. In this particular scenario, one is unfortunate. And when this combination is not supported by other good factors, if other Raj Yogas are not being made, in that particular scenario, in these cases, I have seen ninth and eighth connection that even if the person gets something through luck, inheritance, etc., or these things. Then also they may lose it. They may not value the money or resources when they have it. They may lose it in their ignorance or in whatever way they deal with it. And eventually they repent. Right. So whatever they get through fortune is not lasting for a lifetime. That is the first thing. And secondarily, the way they use it later on, they repent only that in ignorance or because we did not thought much. We spent it this way, which was not a good way to do it, right? Such things are there. So that is what should be understood. When malefic planets are connected to the ninth house, Sun, Mars, Saturn, Rahu, then it certainly makes the person unfortunate. At least it gives you know, struggle. Misfortune is there. So these people generally you will see major malefics connected to the ninth house. Multiple people when they start a business after taking loan or you know, putting something for lease. They start a business, that business does not work. Right. Some calamities, some natural calamities happen, some new government order come, which makes their, you know, which, which makes doing business difficult. These things keep on happening with people. So for that proper remedy is needed. Otherwise, this circle of misfortune does not end and the life of the person becomes full of struggles and there is no success, contentment, achievement in the life of the native, right? Luck is more like if a person is unlucky in that particular scenario, you know, many factors will go against him. And so this thing you have to understand in this particular setup of malefics connected to the ninth house, if these malefics are powerful, exalted, Swarashi, Multrikon, Vargottam, Guru Navansh, then in that particular scenario, later on, after initial struggles, initial hiccups, and some years of struggle, some years of compromises, later on in the second half of life, person can be fortunate and person can be lucky. Right? If these planets are lord of good houses, specifically the lord of, if the malefics connected to the ninth house are lord of good houses, specifically you say 10th house, ninth house, or ascendant, in that particular scenario, it will make a Rajyog. In that Rajyog, the person is lucky, not only lucky, the person gets power, name, fame, prestige also. If this malefic is the lord of fifth house in that particular scenario, it is a good combination for spirituality. And this people will be like, this person will be lucky. These people will be lucky only when they actively pursue spirituality and when they don't cheat anyone. If they have this negative tendency of eating non-vegetarian food, cheating people or being very clever in that particular scenario, their luck may not support them. They can get tossed by luck, right? This can happen. 
So this you have to keep in mind. If the planet is the ninth lord itself, a ninth lord connected to the ninth house is very, very good. That is one of the best combinations, right? This you will know if you have watched all of my videos. So that is there. One more thing is there, right? You should not jump to a conclusion only after looking, you know, only after watching one of my video, you should see all the videos that are there in the channel. You should make an understanding and then you should interpret the horoscope, right? This quick fast food astrology is not something of my liking so that I don't produce also, right? You, you should keep this particular thing in mind. So this all about luck and when it comes to luck, I think not only 9,000, Navamsha also is very important. People generally think that Navamsh is for marriage only. This is a wrong information. Navamsh is for almost everything. And the level of importance people give to Navamsh in marriage analysis is overhyped. Right? Navamsh is not that much important in marriage as people think. But in the matters of fortune, Navamsh is extremely, extremely important. If a planet is going into a good Navamsh, which is friendly also, good Navamsh and friendly Navamsh both, Natural friend enmity of the planets, you should be knowing. If you don't know, I have made videos over it. You can watch that. If the planet goes into a friendly and beneficial Navash, then that planet will make you fortunate. Despite the fact if the planet is connected to ninth house or not. In the Dasha Antar Dasha of that planet, you will be fortunate. In the signification of that planet, you will be fortunate. By signification of that planet, I mean that if the planet is 7th Lord or Venus, then you will be fortunate in the matters of marriage. This is one point. Other than that, if the planet is going into a good Navamsh only or friendly Navamsh only, specifically good Navamsh, if the planet is going in good Navamsh, which is not friendly, but a good Navamsh, good Navamsh means Navamsh Rashi lauded by a beneficial planet. In that particular scenario also, experience related to the planet, experience in the Dashantar Dasha of the planet, experience related to the significations of the planet is very pleasing, is very good, is very beneficial. So that also should be included in the matters of luck. The third thing related to luck is if a planet goes into a friendly Navamsh, if the planet goes into the Navamsh of a planet who is naturally friendly to the planet, in that particular scenario, in Dasha Antar Dasha of the planet and in the significations of that planet, one is well supported, one is well connected. For example, you say if the 10th Lord goes into friendly Navamsh, then in that particular scenario, in your profession, you are well supported. So you have good contacts. In which case, even if you lose your job using your contacts, using your skills, using your social circle, you can quickly get a new job or you can start with a new business. You can easily secure a loan. So these three things, apart from the ninth house, also influence luck, which are based on Navamsh. And that also you should see with care and attention to analyze the luck properly. Other than that, ninth house indicates dharma also, right? Dharma is the rightiest thing that needs to be done, that needs to be done. And about Dharma, it is told Dharma Rakshati Rakshita, right? If you protect the Dharma, Dharma protects you. According to me, what it means, see, Dharma is the foresight of our Rishis, right? It is only the Indian thought, Indian philosophy, Vedic philosophy, Hindu philosophy, which, which have, you know, believed in the concept of who have given birth to the concept of dharma, right? This is not present in the beliefs of other religions as such, right? So dharma is based on the foresight of our rishis. It comprises of what needs to be essentially done. And when you do it, you are secured for the future. For an example, if you have a child, you will have a child or you will not have a child that is a part of fortune. You should have a child that is a part of dharma. But if you have a child, you should give right education, good samskaras to the child, good learning to the child. This is a part of dharma. And when you do it, the result of this is when the child will grow up, he will protect you, he will respect you, he will give you happiness, he will stand by your side, right? So dharma is based on foresight. If the ninth house is connected with benefits, in that particular scenario, one will follow their dharma. If it is connected to Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, Moon, then one will follow their dharma. That means one will do their duties towards their family members, spouse, children, siblings, towards the society. They will follow their dharma. And as a result of which in the long run, they will get benefited. In the other hand, if there are malefics connected to the ninth house, in that particular scenario, one will not follow their dharma. One will try to run away from the responsibilities. 
so you know they will not get benefited out of it they will not be protected by the dharma because ninth house also indicates the old age ninth house and ninth house onwards from ninth house to 12th house also indicates the old age i have a very simple panda ascendant indicate childhood up to the age of 25 26 then fifth house indicate from the age of 25 26 up to the age of 50 55 ninth house indicates 55 onwards now in this 55 onwards you are not in control of many of the things and you are here to reap the result of what you have done in your young age this is indicated by the ninth house and when ninth house is connected to malefic planets dharma does not protect you in this point of time after 55 60 when you are all by your luck there things are not into your favor things are not into your things are not posited in a way which will benefit you right so for this reason also ninth house becomes very very important right because only when the ninth house is important you will enjoy when you are not in control of things right so ninth house have to be good for the person to not become helpless at a point of life because if the ninth house is bad if the ninth house is you know influenced by weak planets if the ninth lord is weak then person will often become helpless and this will not be good for the longer run specifically in old age this is very very problematic in fact what i have seen that if weak planets are connected to the ninth house debilitated combust inimical rashi planets are connected to the ninth house in that scenario one will fall short to fall to you know uplift their dharma to keep on their dharma so financial problems mental issues and things related to his fortune may you know force them to not follow their dharma which is not good this means that the person will be incapable you know the person will have more responsibilities than what he can actually fulfill that what he can actually meet so this also should be seen very carefully right because having a child or getting married only is not enough if you can protect your life partner if you can protect your children if you can provide things to your life partner if you can meet what is expected of you as a parent as a as a mother as a father as a husband as a wife will you be able to do that or you will not be able to do that is seen with respect to ninth house and when ninth house is not good you are not able to fulfill your dharma in this particular scenario if one is going through sufferings or if one is not having the support then it is not because of other people but it is because of the native himself he should do self introspection generally you will see these people always blame others because they fall short of doing their own dharma so when you know the problem is in myself they will all, always blame others right this is a trait of someone who is having shallow thinking shallow mind shallow mentality right so this will happen but here the problem lies in the native itself if someone is having this combination first of all they should stop blaming others they should do a lot of self introspection and then they should try to follow in their level best to uplift the dharma to follow the dharma only then they can expect to enjoy good results otherwise not in keeping up to the dharma specifically sun jupiter mars moon connected to the ninth house is very very beneficial it indicates that one does more than what is expected of them that is very good and following the dharma also makes you a beneficial person and essential person for the society so if the ninth house is powerful powerful planet is connected to the ninth house if the ninth lord is powerful ninth house will become powerful by the aspect of jupiter mercury and ninth lord or the placement of jupiter mercury and the ninth lord in ninth house then in that particular scenario you are a high value individual to the society you are very essential for the society because of your contributions many things are you know many things are being done in the society such people are very indispensable for the society right so and because if you are one such person who because of whom because of whose contribution work intelligence there is peace happiness and morality in society there there is sustenance of society such people get blessed by narayan right because narayan is the god of preservance so such people get 
blessed by narayan and generally you will see that such people they can have some shortcomings right now they can have some scarcity in life right now but eventually they do not die unhappy right they eventually get things one after another with the blessings of narayan and narayan will truly bless you only when you follow the dharma uplift the dharma and you become a valuable person for the society in that valuable person for the society you will only become when you follow the dharma so this you should do right and this you will be astrologically able to do only when there is a powerful planet connected to the ninth house ninth lord is powerful in fact ninth house also indicates virtue what is the virtue or what is the best quality of the person and you should be virtuous because you see many a times this thing come that this person have not worshiped any god or this person is an atheist but still they are very prosperous people generally ask right which god bill gates have worshiped which god steve jobs have steve jobs have worshiped but still they have not worshiped any god still they are very successful why it is so this is because of ninth house because gods will favor the person who do good karma gods will favor the person who will do dharma gods will favor the person who is dispens indispensable for the society and such people will automatically be blessed by gods and if you are not having these things you are not following your dharma you are not indispensable for the society in that particular scenario no matter how many remedies you do how many times you visit the temple or how many mantras you chant you will not get the blessings of the god so first you should focus on following your dharma becoming an important asset for the society that is the first thing that is needed right so talking of virtue your god's blessed you only when you are virtuous this virtue comes from the ninth house so when sun is connected to the ninth house right the person should help in proper power distribution of the society this person whenever they see some in inequality is happening and inequality is happening they should try to stop it and they should bring justice and equality to the society then they will become virtuous and gods will support them moon connected to the ninth house they should serve the society they should emotionally connect the society they should try to give happiness to those people who are not getting happiness by default right so people who are in you know orphanage or underprivileged people they should spend time with them they should give them something then they will become virtuous mars connected to the ninth house you become virtuous by serving your homeland by serving your country by protecting your homeland so any means of protection be it protection of soil protection of animal or protection of the country by joining police army forces or becoming a whistle blower for things if you do then you will become virtuous and you will be favored by god gods mercury venus and jupiter these three are intellectual planets jupiter venus are ministers mercury is an intellectual planet if they are connected to the ninth house then distribution of knowledge production of knowledge teaching people giving guidance to people makes you virtuous and then it makes gods love you favor you right what i am telling you is that once you start doing the things related to virtue as per the planet connected to the ninth house sitting in the ninth house aspecting the ninth house sitting with the ninth lord aspecting the ninth lord then gods will automatically favor you and you will not be need of doing remedies after that if you do remedies then it will be more and more beneficial and more and more better for you right so in these cases you should give knowledge jupiter mercury venus connected to the ninth house you should give knowledge to the society produce knowledge to the society give guidance to people specifically in the case of mercury giving bare minimum essential knowledge to people about reading writing learning mathematics etc makes you very virtuous in the case of jupiter religious giving religious knowledge to people uplifting the temples priests etc of your religion gives you the highest virtue and in the case of venus helping weaker people right people who come from the weaker parts of society or people of the you know people who are having weak body helping them in any way makes you virtuous and giving all type of happiness to your life partner taking care of your spouse makes you very virtuous when saturn is connected to the ninth house in that particular scenario if you selflessly work people and using your knowledge skill resources if you help in training of people specifically those people who do physical labor it will make you virtuous other than that cleaning temples and keeping places around you clean also makes you virtuous when saturn is connected to the ninth house rahu connected to the ninth house taking care of those no one takes care of animals 
and other such things, right? Animals, birds, insects, etc. This makes you virtuous. And with Rahu, one should work on, you know, one should work on creating harmony in the society. Right? One should work in such a way that people in the society love each other. Right? So, if you work as a middleman between two people or if you stop a fight or if you stop something which is unnecessarily disturbing the lives of people, it will make you virtuous. And in the case of Ketu, helping those people who are living in the fringes of society, people who are not having even bare minimum, people who are forced to sleep on streets and all such people, if you help them, it will give you virtue. With Ketu, if you read things related to dharma and if you do virtuous things, like if you have good qualities in your nature and you become a living example for people in the society, then it will give you the highest virtue. Then it will give you the biggest virtue, which is better than any remedy. Many a times I have seen people generally comment that we do not do remedy. We have not done any remedy. God have done everything good to me. And all of that, God have done everything good to you because you are virtuous. That is first point. If someone is not doing Vedic remedies, chanting mantra and all of these things, then one is not getting benefited from that biggest blessings that our Rishi have given us. So this is only ignorance, right? If one chooses not to get benefited from this, it is their own choice, right? But it is there. This is the biggest blessings of the Rishis. And if you want and you should get yourself benefited from it, because that is why the Rishis have given this to us, right? That is why Rishis have, you know, Rishis are mantra trishta. So they have seen the mantras, formed the mantras, right? Got in, got connected, got connected to the, you know, have realized the energies of the you know, deity of the mantra and then have given these mantra, Oma Karma, worship related procedures for the better of mankind and that one should use for their benefit if there is need, right? And not doing this is utter ignorance. If someone is not using it, it is well and good, but it is there for our use only is what needs to be understood. And what, why I am telling you this because ninth house indicates deity and ninth house indicates temple as well. If someone is unfortunate or if someone thinks that in my horoscope, despite having good combinations, I am not getting the result. It can be because of the Shantra Dasha. It can be because of multiple other factors, weakness of planets, etc. etc. Then how to be more lucky or how to open up your luck? First of all, you should donate things related to household. Better to give it to newlywed couple. Right, underprivileged newlywed couple, better to give it to them or to any needy person you can give. If you can donate money for someone's marriage, that is the best. Donation of things related to household, bed, curtains, cushion, bed sheet, right, vessels, utensils. Donation of these things, etc. also helps in waking up your luck, making uh, you more lucky. Most importantly, cleaning temples, giving money to people who are into such things such as cleaning or giving money to guards, etc. or helping them in any way right? by giving them education, by referring them to a job or helping them in any way, specifically cleaning temples, cleaning the idols of the gods. When done regularly for one year, regularly means on a regular interval, once every month, once every week, right? Then I have seen in one, one and a half year, one becomes very lucky because this will give you very great virtue and it will make God's support you, makes God favor, makes God's favor you. And that will be good. Right. So these remedies one should do to open up their luck, right? To become more lucky. Now coming to the point of temple, generally People visit temples and they visit the right temple, of course. But it is not in the right direction. See, you have to understand the point that astrology is synchronization of things, right? Astrology is synchronization of human life with destiny. So first of all, ninth house indicate temple, which temple you should go 
which deity you should worship is also indicated by the ninth house. Fifth house is mantra. It will decide the type of mantra. The deity whose mantra you will do will also come from the ninth house. Coming to sun, if sun is connected to ninth house, situated in ninth house, expecting ninth house with ninth lord, sun is the ninth lord. Sun is with ninth lord, expecting the ninth lord. Then in that particular scenario, one should worship Shiva. Sun itself is a god. One can worship sun itself. But sun temples are not functional in India as such. But worship of sun through mantra, yantra, tantra, that can be done. So for sun, you can worship Shiva or you can worship sun itself. For moon, one should worship Parvati. So Lajja Gauri temples are there in Odisha and Bengal and Andhra Pradesh. So Lajja Gauri one can worship. Other forms of Parvati, any of the Mahavidyas also one can worship. Other forms of Mother Goddess, Kamakshi, Kamakshi Devi, Meenakshi Devi, these one can worship. Right. So for moon, one should worship Goddess. For Mars, worship of fierce form of Goddess Kali, Chamunda, Durga is good. Worshipping of Bhairav Hanuman is also recommended. Doing their mantra, visiting their temple is good. For Mercury, worship of Vishnu is highly recommended. Incarnations of Vishnu, worship of Ram, Krishna, nursing is very good. High grief is very good. In this particular case, the non-human incarnations of Vishnu, Urmavara, etc. is not worshipped at home. So be careful about it. In case of Jupiter, then the Symbology, right? Jupiter indicates symbology of gods. So, worshipping Jyotir Lingas or Shiva in the form of Ling is a very good remedy for Jupiter. For Jupiter, one can also worship Narayan, Satya Narayan, right? Vishnu in the form of Narayan, one can also worship. And Shiva family, worshipping Shiva family, Shiva with Parvati is also indicated by Jupiter. Specifically, if one visits a Jyotir Ling and a Shakti Peet together, in the same journey means you leave home, you go to Jyotirling first, Shakti Pit after that, and then come back home, or you go to Shakti Pit first, Jyotirling after that, and then come back home is the best remedy for Jupiter. Jupiter being the significator of temple deities and gods only being religious, only visiting temples, chanting mantras, and engaging in a spiritual practice regularly is the best remedy for Jupiter. In the case of Venus, Annapurna, Lakshmi are very good deities that one can worship. Durga, Kamakshi, Meenakshi goddesses can also be worshipped for Venus. Their temples can be visited, their mantras can be chanted. That is good. For Saturn, the temple of Brahma in Puskar is very miraculous. Hanuman, Bhairav can also be worshipped for Saturn. Right. These deities, their mantras can be chanted for Saturn. Their temple one can visit for Saturn. For Rahu, worshipping goddess Saraswati, goddess Durga, and other fear form, other fears form of goddess Chandi, Chamunda, etc. is very beneficial. Do their mantra, visit their temple. In fact, fears Mahavidyas like Kali Tara Bagalamukhi also one can visit. One can visit their temple, do their mantras. Visiting temple, I will recommend Mahavidya mantras. You cannot do without initiation. Be very careful about it. For the case of Ketu, one should worship gods without human head. So Ganesh, Hanuman, Haigriv, these deities one should worship. Right, their temple one should visit, their mantras one should do for Ketu. And it will, because this is connected to the ninth house and ninth house is connected to luck and fortune, it will make you more lucky and it will make you more fortunate. So see what the God does. If you are not getting a job, you will get a job by your hard work, by your skill only. But if you visit temples, if you do worship, then slowly, slowly over time, you will become tension free. That means your job will become stable, your skill will increase, your importance in the eyes of people will increase, you will have good contacts. So first of all, you will not lose your job until and unless you want it. And even if you will lose your job, you will get a new job quickly. And if you don't get a new job quickly, then you will get other sources of income. If you start a business, you will be quickly successful. If not successful, then at least you will be able to sustain yourself. This is what you get by the worship of God by being devoted to gods, right? Like sustenance is not a problem. You are sustained by the blessings of deities, right? And these are the great vision of greatest gift of our sages to us. So if you are a born Hindu, if you are a Sanatani, then why not use the gift that our forefathers have left for us? You should use it. The important point that I was telling you 
regarding this particular DT is that you see generally people visit to temples. If this is applicable to temple, not applicable to mantra, etc. Generally people visit temple and for a DT there can be multiple temples. So which temple will actually activate the part of that astrology is synchronization of luck with well, luck with your effort or luck with the person is see sun indicates east direction venus will indicate southeast mars will indicate south rahu ketu will indicate southwest saturn will indicate west moon will indicate northwest mercury will indicate north jupiter will indicate northeast now if a planet is connected to the ninth house situated in the ninth house take the rashi in ninth house if a planet is aspecting the ninth house take the rashi where the planet is situated in if you are taking the ninth lord take the rashi of the ninth lord Planet conjoined with ninth lord, he will be conjoined in the same Rashi. Take the Rashi planet aspecting the ninth lord, take the Rashi of the aspecting planet. Now, as per the lord of the Rashi, choose the direction of the temple. If this Rashi is a movable Rashi, Aries, Cancer, Capricorn, Libra, then the temple should be far away, at least two, three states away from the place of your residence. If it is a dual Rashi, then the temple should be in neighboring neighboring state or neighboring city. Dual Rashi is Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces. And if it is a fixed Rashi, that is Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius and Leo, then the temple which is nearby your home, nearest to your home, nearest to the place of residence, in the same city, in the same area is beneficial for you. Right? So the choice should be made accordingly. Now in this, in this particular setup, in the case of Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces and Capricorn Rashi, if the temple is near to a water body or if a temple have a huge water body well pond in its complex, that temple is good to visit. For Aries, Sagittarius, Leo, if the temple is on a hill or if the area around the temple is very rocky, then that temple is very beneficial to visit. You should be a regular visitor to this particular temple, right? One can visit any temple. But in earlier times, you must have heard, for example, in Ujjain, there is a temple nearby Mahakal, in, Mahakal temple in Ujjain. There is temple of goddess Harasiddhi. This Harasiddhi is a, is this Harasiddhi was, Harasiddhi goddess was the prime deity, Kula Devi of the King Vikramaditya. Right, so every king is having a temple, and the king is patron of that particular temple. Right, so if you want to become a king, you should do things like a king, and you should also be patron of a temple. This temple, you patron of a temple means you generally give regular donation, donation on regular interval to this particular temple. Being patron of the temple means you visit this temple on a regular interval, say once every year, once every month. And thirdly, pattern of the temple means whenever you achieve something new, purchase a new home, purchase a new vehicle, you go to the temple. Whenever you want to do something very big, start a new business, going for marriage, going for foreign travel or doing something, you visit this particular temple. So you become a pattern of that temple. So right now I am talking about the temple you should be pattern of. The location of the temple, the distance to that temple, the direction of that particular temple, etc. Right. So coming back to the topic, in the case of Taurus, Gemini, Libra, Rashi, this temple which you should be a patron of should be in the middle of the city. That will be better. Right. In the case of Virgo and in the case of Aquarius, if the temple is at a place which is difficult to reach, right, on an island or something like that, or temple is at a place temple is in an area which looks very, you know, which is, you say, overly crowded or is very empty, you say, midst of a desert, difficult to reach, difficult to commute, difficult to go to, then that temple will be best for you. So you should choose a temple accordingly and you should be a patron of that temple and that will make you kingly. That will make you kingly because kings have patronage to a particular temple and because this remedy is related to the ninth house being a pattern of this temple will also make you fortunate will also make you lucky and there will be good results 
now the ninth house also indicates guru regarding guru it is told that you should check the ashtavarga of moon and the rashi which is getting maximum points in the ashtavarga of moon if the person is having their ascendant moon or maximum planets in that particular rashi then that person is best as your guru so ninth house indicates guru also and the best remedy for the ninth house is having a guru following the path of a guru following the advices of a guru that also one should do for a natural remedy to the ninth house and how to choose the guru that i have told you specific most importantly when the ninth house is connected to a powerful planet when the ninth lord is powerful one will have the fortune of being in being under the guidance of a guru or godfather right and if the ninth house is weak ninth lord is afflicted then in that particular scenario the guidance of the guru will not be there the blessing of the guru will not be there but these are the people who maximum need it so if you have this particular setup go have a guru it is not necessary that the guru should be living only the guru can be dead as well you can have your mental devotion towards them and to follow their path to follow their words you can read their books books written on them books written by them that also you can do that will be very very good ninth house also indicates father when there is benefic planet connected to the ninth house generally father is good father loves you father is attached to you father gives you a lot of things when malefic planet is connected to the ninth house in that particular scenario one can have a bad father one can have a strict father one can have misery because of father importantly what i have seen that if sun goes to scorpio navamsh or if the ninth lord is situated in 12th house or 6th house in that particular scenario the father can be absent the mother and father can be divorced or the father can be ignorant about the native right so this particular thing is there when weak planets are connected to the right debilitated combust inimical rashi planet are connected to the ninth house or if the ninth lord goes into this condition then in these cases the condition of the father is not very good and because the condition of the father is not very good the father is not able to provide much resources and many things to the native which makes their childhood difficult on the other hand when the ninth lord is powerful that exalted mul trikon surashi vargottam in that particular scenario the father is also very powerful one belongs from a rich family and because of father being powerful one's childhood is very good and tension free most importantly what i have seen that when retrograde planets are connected to the ninth house or when ninth lord is retrograde then generally in these conditions initially the father is very good but after some bitter experiences in business or some bitter experiences with mother the love and support of the father misses from the life of the native and in these cases when retrograde planets are connected to the ninth house in that particular case fathers can generally do some mistakes of investing into bad businesses or losing some major money which in the childhood of the person creates great shift from a very good influential happy life to a poor compromised humble life right so these things are also there which have to be carefully seen and the purpose of analyzing this complete thing and making a prediction is the is is the expectation that one will make appropriate changes in their life the father will be careful of not doing such things and not spoiling the life of the child right this is the basic target that we are having most importantly you can check the rashi of the ninth lord and the rashi of the ninth lord will indicate what are the good qualities that one inherits from their father so that is also there and with respect to father one more thing i will tell you from the ascendant of father if the child is born in the 6th rashi or 8th rashi from the ascendant of father or the 6th lord or the 8th lord of the father's horoscope if it is situated in the ascendant of the child or if it is connected to the ascendant lord of the child or if it is aspecting the ascendant or aspecting the ascendant lord of the child then in that particular scenario in name fame prestige riches comforts luxuries the child will survive the a child will surpass his father so that is very good on the other hand if the child is born in the rashi which is fourth house from the ascendant of the father right one is having ascendant or moon in that rashi which is fourth house from the ascendant or moon rashi of the father or if one is having the planet 
who is the fourth lord in the father's horoscope in their ascendant or connected to the ascendant lord in that particular scenario such child will always need the constant guidance of the father and because otherwise they cannot do well in life right so this also have to be very very seriously seen and predicted right which which person will be able to surpass their father and which person will always need the shadow of their father is also very important ninth house is called a shubh auspicious house right so how auspicious a person is is also seen with respect to the ninth house like if one is lucky one is also auspicious right because lucky person is favored by goddess lakshmi i have already talked about it but one more thing i will tell you that if some if you are not having a beneficial planet connected to the ninth house or if your ninth lord is not powerful then in that particular scenario the one who is having a powerful planet or a beneficial planet connected to the ninth house that person is lucky and auspicious also being auspicious means that if you associate with this person if you work as per the advice of this person then you will also become lucky auspicious things will also happen to you so in the case of match making while making friends you can check this combination and by following their advice and by doing things as they suggest or as they do you can make yourself more fortunate not only that when we choose a priest etc right someone who is going to do remedy for you when you choose that person generally if the horoscope of the priest is not having very good combinations specifically this auspiciousness combination if in the horoscope of priest a beneficial planet is connected to the ninth house or when the ninth lord is powerful then that priest will be fortunate that priest will be auspicious right that priest if they do your remedies if they do mantra chanting for you worship for you that will be very effective for you and if you donate money clothes etc to this priest or this person then it will also be better for you right and donation is also in modern world it is also gifting so if you have any such person who is having a very strong ninth house or a very beneficial or a very strong planet connected to the ninth house keep giving regular gift to these people take their advice do things as they suggest and this will be one of the best and the easiest way to become more lucky and fortunate right so this also you can do and this is one of the most natural remedy that you can do most importantly ninth house also indicates finance ninth house also indicates tapa so many a times when you suggest remedies to people you see that they are not able to do remedies they are not able to you know dedicatedly do the remedies sometime the order breaks sometime they have to go outside or sometime they go into vices right their faith in the god their faith in the person who have given the remedy their faith in the remedy itself that it starts becoming shaky this happens because of the weakness of the ninth house affliction to the ninth house right so whatever remedy is given to you whoever if you have complete faith in remedy if you have complete faith in deity related to the remedy if you have complete faith in the person who have given you the remedy then at that point of time itself you have started doing the remedy of the ninth house and it will be very successful whereas on the other hand if you doubt these people then it will make it will hit your ninth house it will make you unlucky and it will make sure that the remedy does not work right so this is one of the important thing that you need to see in the same line when one is going through dasha antar dasha of the ninth lord when there is a beneficial planet transiting in when there is a benefic planet jupiter moon mercury venus transiting in ninth from the moon or the ascendant or when the ninth lord is powerful in transit going through exaltation rashi mul trikon rashi on rashi virgo uttam rashi or when the ninth lord in transit is conjoined or respected by a beneficial planet that is the best time to start a remedy so if you want to visit a temple if you want to start visiting a temple if you want to start chanting a mantra or if you want to do a homa or any other remedial procedure then such time you should look for and you should start doing remedy at that point of time that will be better it will make the remedy more effective you will do less you will do less hard work and the remedy will give you more effect right so this is a very important thing this is another very important thing and coming to this particular part of penance right see sometimes people will take a pledge 
you see everything is tapasya everything is penance dedicatedly doing your work you see spiritualists have told that living in life human life the life of a householder is like walking on the edge of the sword it any time it can go anyway right so living your life as an householder you are only successful when you have the ability to do penance when you have the ability to do to walk on the edge of the sword and that ability you will only have when the ninth lord is powerful when there is a beneficial planet connected to the ninth house right only then you will get this particular ability so in this also to know whether one will be a successful householder one will be able to provide for their family members one will be able to provide for those who are dependent on them and one will be successful in life you should check the ninth house in fact if someone makes you a promise and you want to know if they will be able to keep the promise or not it is also seen with respect to the ninth house and when i say this is seen with respect to the ninth house you can make a prashna regarding this check the ninth house and if the ninth house is powerful in prashna influenced by beneficial planets in prashna it will indicate that the person will keep promises otherwise not in natal horoscope also those who have ninth lord powerful only these people can keep their promises only these people can do the penance properly otherwise not in mantra sadhana and other such things if someone takes this particular pledge that i will do mantra sadhana or i will do spiritual practices and will have emancipation and all of these things as a result of it they will only succeed in doing it when the ninth house is powerful when the ninth lord is powerful otherwise not right so having penance is indicated by ninth house one will be successfully able to complete take the penance complete it only when the ninth house is powerful so for spiritual matters also ninth house is very indispensable that you have to see that you have to see this is something that you cannot ignore at all now maximum things i have told you right though analysis of a house can never end right i can teach you a one hour i can teach you a three hour class on every house still some things will be left out right but major things i have told you other results you can make yourself now i will specifically tell you like you have to keep other things in mind generally when i talk about result of planet in houses it does not mean that only this much result the planet is going to give in that particular house in this video before and in multiple other videos i must have explored the same combination right so this gives a total picture whatever result i am going to tell you right now is the special result of planet in the ninth house apart from all of these results that i have already mentioned so both of these things what i have already mentioned and what i am going to mention both of these things you will have to keep in mind otherwise it will be problematic a special result sun situated in the ninth house generally person is related to the government person is connected to the government person earns through government but these people generally don't have very good experiences with their father cannot get supported does not get much support from their father or they will have to take care of their father in old age right either of these things will be there so relationship with father is not very good if the relationship with father is good then in the older age of father they will have to take care of their father or the father can be completely absent or there can be loss of father early in life also the person's profession is connected to the government that is for very certain this person is successful in life only after taking risks and this person should take risk and only then they will become successful very valorous very heroic person very fearless but there will be ups and downs in life settlement generally happens late and with siblings though with siblings the relationship is not very good the siblings are not of much help to the native as such and generally one two failed attempts for business one will do even if there is combination of success in business in that also the success in business will come only after one two failed initial attempts moon in the ninth house is a very good setup generally in this scenario mother is working and because of this particular reason one does not get much care and love from mother side but other than that moon in the ninth house makes you lucky and fortunate it will generally give you female siblings 
it makes the person timid and fearful also but the person is very loving very emotional very caring the person will be god fearing as well generally moon in the ninth house is a very great combination for riches such people are rich such people are fortunate and generally such people can earn unexpected wealth through lottery etc also and these people also get huge returns from investments as well right so this is a very good setup mars in the ninth house generally these people work greatly for the society they live in for the land they are born in very much attached to their homeland very much attached to their motherland other than that the relationship with father is generally very good father can be strict but the relationship with father is very good the the person is well supported by their family members even the relationship with siblings is very good but their siblings themselves can also struggle in life so at the times of need though they will try to do maximum help but they because they themselves are not very resourceful much help they cannot do person is heroic great risk taker will want to start business one to fail attempts he will do in business right one to fail attempts he will have but eventually he will succeed if he is having proper dedication and devotion mars in the ninth house generally makes the person lucky but the person can be disturbed by multiple diseases that he may have so health is something that they should be very very careful about other than that mars in the ninth house does indicate that one can be you know one can go against the wishes of their guru and one can because of their speech or because of their actions one can invite the wrath of one can invite the anger of elder people or more authoritative more more socially powerful people so this is something regarding which they should be careful one becomes lucky in the second part of life only and it is only hard work which gives them everything such people if they think that they will get lucky just by you know they will get lucky by avoiding hard work that is not possible hard work is the key to luck for them mercury connected to the ninth house is very good the person is lucky very successful in business right the person is also a uh, the person realizes what is spirituality person is great devotee to gods as well they will generally not have very good relationship with their siblings siblings will be both male and female the person will be god fearing the person will take risks but will not succeed into it good income from investments is indicated the person is good in speaking this person with his good speech can make others do anything this person is charming and attractive as a teacher speaker it is very good a very good combination for doing astrology person is very fortunate the person is so fortunate that his friends colleagues and you know people in in uh, same profession will become jealous of him will try to compete with him but they will not be able to compete with the native father somehow in these cases with mercury in the ninth house father somehow is not very capable even if father wants to do their best because of conditions they cannot do father is generally father is father have to generally struggle in life because of which the childhood of the person can also be strained with jupiter in the ninth house one is very religious chanting mantra visiting temples is very good for the native highly devoted but jupiter in the ninth house will also indicate that one will not listen to their guru or one does not properly believe in their gurus and teachers these people are of experimentative nature and they don't blindly follow what is told but they only take things after experience and because they are not following things but taking but taking knowledge or taking learning after experience only this will significantly delay good times in their life right because see if when you get knowledge through experiment or when you get knowledge through experience it also means that you have to face failures right so that particular thing of facing failures because you are taking knowledge only after experimentation because you don't blindly believe anyone is something that comes with jupiter jupiter in the ninth house will make you very fortunate person generally belongs from a very good family he have much support from his family and family members i have seen that these people start working early in life right but they become very successful they can retire early also 
they generally have male siblings well supported by their siblings their fathers love them well supported by their fathers also come from a very great lineage right they will get multiple things in inheritance also they can get these people will earn well through investments right getting things by lottery earning much money through investments is indicated generally such people will live long they will be religious god fearing there will be good health beautiful body these people will be attractive charming they will be popular right these things will be there these people though initially in childbirth there can be some issues but these people will have child for sure the child will do well the child will be successful the child will be obedient to them these person are also great visionaries in business they are very successful in finances they are clever generally these people are rich as well and whatever is their projection about how things will go how things will happen is also very very good right with respect to venus in the ninth house these people are lucky after marriage they becomes they become even more lucky if they purchase property invest money in the name of their life partners then it will bring them it will bring them more luck and more fortune and better fortune the relationship with life partner is like the relationship sustains the marriage sustains but the relationship cannot be told to be very respectful right the relationship with life partner is somehow very disrespectful but it is only after marriage and only after listening to the advices of the life partner they will progress in life these people are lucky these people are fortunate people want to become like them very sweet spoken with their speech they can make people do anything right but it also indicates strong relationships before marriage in which there can be failure it is also a combination for extra marital affairs after marriage these people can also aspire to be in relationship with someone very much out of their league and will become disappointed because of that which will be very shocking and painful to the native which makes them feel dejected and depressed this is something that they should avoid worship of goddess worship of devi is very beneficial for them if they have female siblings they are well supported by the female siblings with male siblings they don't go very well god fearing lovely people they have some artistic talents very good articulation very good presentation skills they are having right they can get much name fame status by book writing they are very good advisors and whoever takes advice from them those people also succeed much this person is also great visionary and whatever is his plan regarding things how things will go and how things will happen is generally very accurate because of which they generally have a very stable life as well saturn in the ninth house is not a very good setup luck rises in the second part of life the relationship with father is not very cordial there can be losses because of government right governmental punishment capital punishment can be there right the rise of luck is slow though the life is stable but the progress is also it progress also happens very slowly they do not come from a very great lineage as such so they will first have to do a lot for their family and only then you can work for themselves these people initially they don't have very good income later on they can earn very very well that is there because of the family and societal conditions they will have to compromise on their wishes dreams and desires right which does not get fulfilled very easily and they will have to sacrifice for the betterment in their life say someone is naturally talented in music say someone is naturally talented in music but they cannot pursue music because Uh, they have a family to look after right this is indicated by saturn in the ninth house in the later part of life after the age of 45 48 they are generally very successful very respected one thing is very certain with saturn in the ninth house that these people if they live away from their homeland then they are successful these people if they start giving their services to the society right then stability and good result we can expect in their life the relationship with siblings is not very good jealousy competition etc is there if the relationship with siblings is good then the siblings are not of much help right 
taking a lot of risk can be very detrimental for them right in the case of investments they have to be patients they have to have patience that quick earning from investment is not possible they will invest money will wait for much time after that only they will get gains the desire of earning quick money will only be problematic for them so this is something that they should not expect for this is something that they should not work for otherwise they can lose the uh lose the fortune or lose the resources that they are already having certain aspecting the 10th house also indicates that you have many enemies you have many competitors many people are jealous of you people want to drag you down and if you are not careful they can succeed into that as well this person can be afflicted by diseases also which can afflict his mental peace which can afflict his enjoyment of marriage which can create problem in their professional life also so about this they should be careful specifically cheating deceit fraud theft from employees from co-workers from servants can be there so one should be very very careful about it problems related to legs accidents etc can happen so one should be careful about it also rahu in the ninth house what i have seen that because of committing bad karmas one right one gets suffering in life these people are very much ignorant of others they purely do some very bad karmas which they are aware of also but they cannot control it because of which they suffer in life at least twice in life they have great fortune right getting great money from inheritance or getting great money from outside they have also these people get multiple great chances what we call breakthrough in life they get multiple breakthrough in life but if they are not careful or if other combinations are not supportive then generally they lose it also they lose it because of their ignorance they lose it because of their over indulgence in vices which they should control the friend circle is not very supportive not very good well wisher for these people right the friend circle is not well, their well wisher so they should have a limit on their friends and should not be very much into friendships otherwise it can be problematic rahu in the ninth house right one is not a good father one is not a good child one is not a good spouse right so there is this not following your dharma properly is there and which is evident in almost all area which if they don't control which if they are not careful about will only lead them to misery in the end generally there are the health is good but in, but because of bad habits because of vices impeding health problems are there which hit the native after the age of 40 after which they can be very diseased and they can be very troubled right having pet animal is not highly recommended for these people if they are planning to have pet animal i will recommend them not to have other than that these people can be very charming and very attractive because of which people will come in contact with them but they will get disappointed only so that is there in the matters of children they can be lucky provided the fact that if they follow the dharma in marriage then in the matter of children they will be lucky and after the birth of child there will be much success and much progress in life if they follow dharma then they will be great visionaries also and whatever is their planning that will come true they can get much money through inheritance stock market lottery etc as well provided the fact that they follow the dharma rahu in the ninth house the most important point is following the dharma if you follow the dharma remain truthful to your spouse remain obedient to your father mother right and fulfill all your duties and responsibilities towards everyone around you only then it will give you good result otherwise it will give you bad result only right rahu in the ninth house also indicates that one can be in tamasic practices of worship mantra chanting etc one may want to harm others by mantra chanting and by other tamasic practices which they should avoid if they avoid it then worshiping doing puja chanting mantra will give them siddhis will give them much accomplishment and can make them great spiritual figures also but these tendencies when will have to control otherwise there will be problems ketu in the ninth house can make you very lucky very fortunate generally relationship with father is not very good but despite being in background father does everything good possible for you and that you enjoy only after the father is gone one is lucky one can earn wealth 
through stock market investments lotteries etc also one can earn right one is spiritual know the essence of spirituality what meditation is very essential for the native because it can create some mental tensions for the native other than that mantra chanting and worshiping god is very beneficial which will always give them quick remedies it is a quick fix these are ketu uh, in the ninth house these are those people for whom the remedies work very very quickly so that is their relationship with siblings is good but after the siblings are married after that the relationship can become strained other than that these people are great risk takers but many a times because of taking risk without proper assessment they can have some huge loss of money also about which they should be careful these people are generally lucky but there is you know there are phases in their life for example for 10 years they are very lucky they do very well but for the next 5 years life looks stagnant this kind of trait is there this kind of tendency is there so if they plan things accordingly and behave according to them do things according to a plan that they have already made then it is good otherwise it will be very very problematic and so this is something that they should be careful about other than that multiple other things i have told from the starting of the video these things also you should apply to all these planets and only that you should come to result and before you conclude anything you have to remember that multiple other factors about which i have talked in my previous videos also you should consider one thing i will tell you for certain only having planet in ascendant 10th house 9th house 11th house is enough for one to be successful provided the fact that these planets are not weak these planets are not afflicted and there are good combinations in the horoscope it is very lucky to have planet in first house 10th house 9th house and 11th house once you have planet in these four house in these four houses your success is 60% guaranteed with right approach right the shantar the shan strength of planets one will be able to succeed very quickly right so just having planets in these houses is 50% thing is already done right so the analysis of these houses becomes important in this regard that the success or failure happiness or otherwise of the person as much as is depends on these four houses does not depend on other houses right so only if these four houses are well fortified and good then you can with confident say that this person will be fortunate this person will be lucky this person will be successful so these four houses versus all the houses of horoscope these four houses are more important according to my experience which you will analyze properly after watching my videos is what i believe